Then all of a sudden he's down in the concourse doing that interview. We'll have to talk with Van Earl when he gets back. Runs back up here from down on the concourse. Well, a pitching change made in the middle of that interview, the night done for Chris Jones. And on from the Norfolk bullpen is right-hander Suk Min Yoon. Yoon, a former member of the starting rotation for the Tides earlier this year, now pitching in a relief role. He is 28 years of age, 6 feet tall, 187 pounds, out of Gurry, South Korea. A member of the Orioles 40-man roster. And a guy they signed in 2014 out of the professional league over in Korea. He was playing for the Kia Tigers in 2013. So Suk Ben Yoon has taken over for Jones. Elmer Reyes will be the first man to face the new Tides pitcher here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. So clearly that's a spot where Jones hit his pitch count. It wasn't because he had been ineffective here lately. He had really been mowing down the G-Braves batters ever since the first. He hit the pitch count and now he's done. And Yoon's first pitch misses outside. Reyes for ball one. Elmer Reyes, sacrifice fly, and also is grounded out to short tonight. And they'll foul this one off to the right. Elmer Reyes, a native of Nagarote, Nicaragua. Not a real baseball hotbed, per se. Here is the 1-1. Swung on and lined to right. That'll fall in front of Quinton Berry and a base hit for Reyes to greet Suk Min Yoon. Well, Reyes has been trying to go the opposite way all night and finally one sits for a base hit, a pitch out away from him. He goes with it. And even though Berry was playing shallow and right, he can't come and catch that ball. So two-out single for Reyes. That is the eighth hit of the night for the G-Braves. Hits now tied at eight aside. And that will bring up Sean Kazmar. One for two, an RBI single tonight. Yoon will miss outside, ball one. The Braves did face Yoon back in the month of April when he was still a starter. And they put a hurt on him. Scored a bunch of runs in the first inning. Kazmar drives one to the gap in left center field. Arudia will run it down, though. Henry Arudia able to make that catch on the fly, and so the Braves turned away scoreless. Here at the bottom of the fifth, we'll go to the sixth at Cool Ray Field with the Braves leading the Tides 5-1. So now we're going to the bottom of the sixth. Yes. Six, five, four, three, Braves on top of the Tides, 5-1 to one as we move into the bottom of the sixth inning here at Coolray Field in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Dave Lazat, Van Earl Wright. And David Pollock and Joe Leonard <laughs> and Maria Shininis. And Who else um, we got? Anybody? Who else? I think, that, I think that'll about do it. Can we get anybody else in here to talk to? I don't think I, we have, and I don't think <laughs> that we're scheduled to have any more guests. Football night here at Cool Ray Field. We'll see a lot of the different jerseys from around the ballpark. What is that jersey? Is that a K-State jersey? My first thought was Penn State, but it had uh, too many stripes. Yeah. Oh, there's Brandon with his Eagle jersey. That's yeah, a Brent Selleck jersey. He was my backup tight end at my fantasy team a couple of years ago. Ozzy Martinez leading it off. Sukmin Yoon gets his first full inning of relief work. He was able to get out of the fifth inning after giving up a two-out single to Elmer Reyes. And now Martinez, who is one for two with a single on the night, is behind in the count 0-2. Breaking ball bounced up there. It's an even count of, or excuse me, a count of one and two. Well, Sukmin Yoon has that stop and start delivery where he will 
get into that motion, pause, and then get back into it. Comes almost to a full rest and then back again. And here's a line drive out towards right field, but Quinton Berry has a beat on it. He'll make the catch, one away. Suk Min Yoon pitched for the Korean national team in both the 09 and 2013 World Baseball Classics. 27 years of age. And I think some of the outings he had in the World Baseball Classic is what first got him noticed here on the United States level. And got teams like the Orioles interested in signing him. We've seen that happen a lot with the WBC. Some guys from the professional leagues in other countries that certainly are scouted by Major League teams here in the U.S., but bring those teams over here to Major League stadiums and play in those games against other Major League talent, you get a better evaluation of what they can do. That's opened some doors for guys from other countries. Edward Salcedo, the batter. One ball, one strike to him. He is one for two with an RBI, or excuse me, with indeed an RBI single tonight. Mm. Swing and a miss, the count. And a ball and two strikes. Off to the right by Salcedo up over the roof. Wind is picked up. We had no wind about an inning ago, and look at that. You see the flags in left center field. It's a driving wind out that way now. One two pitch. Salcedo checked his swing. He is able to hold up. Even count of two and two. Fouled off right at home plate. It's sat underneath the catcher, Clevenger. The count holds at two balls, two strikes. Peeking out towards the bullpens, there is some action out in the pen for Norfolk. And I don't see anything going on out there in the Gwinnett pen. It's quite possible a reliever got loose and then sat back down, but I haven't seen much action at all. And by the way, Kanakoa Texera is at 90 pitches. So he's up near the top half of his pitch count. Probably send him back out for one more inning, but I would imagine to see action start soon. 2-2 pitch. Tagged on the ground under the reach of the diving third baseman, Paredes. That's into left field and a base hit for Salcedo. He's going to try and push it for two. Throw coming in by Arudi and not in time. Almost overslid the bag. But Salcedo will keep a hand on it and he's in there. Certainly a base hit. I took my eye off Arudi. Let's get a look at it again. Does he make an error here? Found the hole between third and short. And Arudio's had a tough night in the field. Handled that too casually. And then his throw was off the mark. Yeah, that'll have to be a double then. That's Salcedo just having a heads up base running, base running play to Good realize that Arudio was slow playing it. So it's Salcedo in scoring position with one out. Todd Cunningham, the batter, he'll take down and in. One ball, no strikes to Cunningham, who was one for three tonight. <laughs> Left upstairs, two balls, no strikes. Braves trying to score for the first time since the five-run first inning. But Kanakoa Texera has made that lead stand up. Yoon the 2-0, swing and a miss by Cunningham. No sign of any real shift on the infield for Todd. Corner outfielders playing shallow. Really all three outfielders playing fairly shallow. And Cunningham will take up and in for a three and one count. Cunningham with a 291 average against righties and a 266 against lefties. 
Facing the right-handed Suk Min Yoon. 3-1 pitch. Up high, ball four. Runners at first and second base. So Cunningham will add a walk to his evening. And he'll bring up Tyler Pasternicki. And Yip has, by the way, the third first base coach for the night. They've been uh, moving around in that position like we've been moving around in our broadcast tonight. <laughs> Trying to keep guys fresh in that yeah. first base coach's box. Well, here is Tyler Pasternicki, a single, a ground out, and a fly out tonight. Time called for by the catcher, Clevenger. Braves trying to extend upon their lead here in the sixth inning. And Salcedo Whoa. was taken off to third base. Sukmin Yoon turned around, had not delivered towards the plate yet. And nearly had Salcedo in a rundown. Salcedo will casually get out to about a four-step lead. Here's the first pitch to Pasternick. He's swinging a miss. Big cut. Pasternick, a guy who makes contact. Salcedo and Cunningham, the men on the base paths, they both run very well. The 0-1. Liner towards right center field. This is going to fall in front of Quinton Berry. He barehands it off the turf, but Salcedo will round and score. Into third standing, Todd Cunningham. And an RBI single for Tyler Pasternick. He raises the lead to 6-1. to one. Nice even swing there by Pasternick. Taking the ball the opposite way. Braves have done that very well tonight. Boy, they really have. Seems like half of their 10 hits, at least, have been opposite way base hits. And that you just got to love to see. And now maybe a concern for Sukmin Yoon on the mound. As not only is he visited by their pitching coach, Mike Griffin, but also... Actually, I thought for a minute that was the trainer, but no, that is actually the interpreter. So it's not an injury issue, it's just they bring out the interpreter with Griffin to talk to Sukmin Yoon. So does the umpire give him twice as much time? No. Uh, well, maybe, they maybe might a be. little bit more lenient, yes, but I wouldn't say twice as much time. I'm trying to find out if they list the interpreter here on the roster. Some teams do that, but I don't see it on here. And as we talk about that situation, the batter, appropriately enough, is Christian Bethencourt. Signed his first pro contract at the age of 16, did Bethencourt. And after playing professional baseball in America, he's a native of Panama, he said, I need to learn the language. And boy, has that really been one of the best decisions he's made. That has served him very well. First pitch swinging as Bethencourt goes to a knee. Strike one. Now, of course, there's no problem communicating with anybody on the pitching staff. I guess unless you have a guy from Korea, like the Tides have now with you. I wouldn't put it past Christian to be able to get on that <laughs> Rosetta Stone and probably learn Korean. No he's, kidding. He's a sharp guy. He is. Got under this ball, though, towards the line and left. That is Arudia with space to make the catch. Tagging from third. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's... Not on line, and so tagging and scoring is Todd Cunningham. The lead now 7-1. to one. Didn't look off the bat of Bethencourt like that was going to be deep enough to score the run from third base, but of course Cunningham runs well. And we've seen some less than accurate throws, let's say, from the quarter outfielders here for the Tides. Rudy, and yeah, as you mentioned, having trouble in the field, but able to field it cleanly, but cannot make an accurate throw. Cunningham with excellent speed. Not a problem tagging up from third base. This will be a sacrifice fly for Christian. The lead is their largest of the night at six runs. And now two away with a runner at first, Tyler Pasternicki. And Joey Tardoslovich, the hitter. Sukman Yoon uncorks to the dish, down and in. Oh. 
Hits are even 10 aside right now. Trevaslovich takes up and in. So obviously the Braves have performed with runners in scoring position. Tides have had a tough time getting runs in. Two zero from Yoon across the outside corner. Strike one call. Two and one. Foul back to the backstop. Might have got a piece of Clevenger on its way back. Looks like Joey has found a groove. He's just got a good rhythm about him lately. 2-2. Two, two. Consistent energy he's putting off. Ball gets away, though. And that's a wild pitch charge to Suk Min Yu, and he bounced it up there. Pasternak, will race on down to second. They weren't holding Tyler on anyways. So he might have been able to... I guess you don't want to call it runner indifference here in the sixth inning, but he might have had his take of second anyways. Well, three and two, so the payoff to Tardoslovich down it in. Ball four, runners at first and second base. I was about to say Pashniki will be taking off, but not at second with nobody at first. But the walk puts runners at first and second. And Brandon Boggs will bat from the left side for the first time tonight. He reached on an error that scored a run. And also scored a run himself. Fouls one off the mask of Clevenger. Nothing and won the count. This is game three of the four games set. Braves trying to take a 2-1 series lead and then hope for the series win tomorrow on a Sunday afternoon at Cool Ray. Fouled back by Boggs. Will be televised again tomorrow. Running out of games here, though, Van Earl. Schedule's getting close to complete here on MeTV for the year. After tonight, just 21 games remaining in the G-Brave schedule. And... Including tomorrow's telecast, just three telecasts remain. We hope you'll join us for all three. Boggs takes low and outside. One ball, two strikes to count. Triple A season can seem like it is speeding by, and then other times it can seem like it has slowed to a halt. It's been a little bit of both categories this year. Poke foul into the screen by Boggs. Count holds at one and two. Right now, though, in the middle of an eight-game homestand are the G-Braves. And coming in for Monday through Thursday, the Paul Tuckett Red Sox. That yeah, should be a good matchup. That'll be fun. Anthony Ronaldo, the leading pitcher of the International League and wins in ERA, one of the top in ERA. More on that later as Boggs strikes out, swinging to end the inning. Leaving a pair of runners on base, but the Braves tack on two and increase their lead on the Norfolk Tides to 7-1. To there is Al Horford of the Atlanta Hawks joining us here at the ballpark tonight. We've had all kinds of guests, Van Earl. No kidding. This has been a star-studded evening, and Horford looks uh, deep in thought. What he's doing is that he's focusing on his upcoming NBA season and looking to have the kind of offense that the Braves have produced tonight. And the Braves scored five runs in the first inning. There's an error on Jimmy Paredes that played in the first run. Sacrifice fly by Elmer Reyes. That scored Christian Bethencourt. Sean Kazmar added an RBI single. Didn't stop there, though. How about Ozzy Martinez? RBI single scored Brandon Boggs standing. And the Braves just scored twice in the sixth inning. Tyler Pasternicki, an RBI single. And a sacrifice fly also in there by Christian Bethencourt. And how about a leadoff single for Elmer Reyes? He's had a nice night at the plate. And he's the leadoff man aboard here in the seventh inning. 
Second straight hit for Elmer Reyes. Everybody's been having a good night for the G Braves. That's 11 hits now for Gwinnett tonight. Sean Kazmar coming up next. That last inning of work by Kanakoa Texera. He went into that inning with 90 pitches, and he couldn't have had more than 10 in that inning. That was very economical. Kazmar fouls one back to the screen. There is action in the Gwinnett Braves bullpen. Looks like a left-hander getting up. So I would imagine if Texera is close to 100 pitches, that's probably where he's going to be done tonight. There's Ryan Buchter. Buchter getting loose. The 0 1 to Kazmar foul back. No balls, two strikes, the count. They had a fun moment pregame just before the game started. Sean Kazmar is down on the field watching the big video board here at Cool Ray Field, and they played some Packers Bears highlights in honor of NFL night. Kazmar raised two hands in the air as he singles in the center here. I'm not sure who was enjoying that more, you or Kazmar. I was kind of enjoying watching Kazmar enjoy it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> he was doing his best Randall Cobb impersonation. Kazmar reaching out, going low, and doing a, putting in a nice piece of hitting right there. Solid base hit. Back up the middle, and now the Braves have two men on. Second hit of the night for Kazmar. And that will bring up Ozzy Martinez. Rain is backed off now. It looks to be pretty light or not at all as Martinez will bend to the knees on an inside strike. They're getting pelted and pounded downtown Atlanta. All kinds of rain. Got a text message saying they're under a flash flood warning. Wow. Chopper back up the middle, but right at the shortstop to Hayes, who steps on the bag, flips to first, two away. It was a tailor-made double play ball right at to Jesus. Sort of palm the throw to first base, but still does complete the 6-3. De Jesus just a couple of steps to his left. Starts the double play, and the flip over to Christian Walker completes it. Just a 6-3 double play. So with two outs now and a runner at third base, Elmer Reyes is at third for Edward Salcedo. He's got a single and a double tonight, two for three, but he pops up the first pitch to shallow right. Quinton Berry has the measure of this. He'll make the catch. And that is all for the seventh. Braves turned away scoreless here on the home half. We'll go to the eighth. The Braves still in charge, leading the tide 7-1. Thank you.